Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's just get right into it. Let's start. In Credit, you, usually, you always have to start by making a new something. Um, Credit is focused on doing digital painting and drawing, so you start by creating those specifics when you start something new. I'm going to work in the high definition, the HD dimensions, uh, but you can scale that up to whoever, whatever makes sense, um, and then click Create. And that gets you started with a canvas. To really dare start doing animation, though, what you'd want to do is use the workspaces and flip over to animation. That gets you with the timeline, and that gets you all the pieces that you need to start working with the animation bits. To start creating here, what you'd need to do, and by the way, this works a lot better if you're using a digital tablet. You can use a mouse just fine, but you get a cleaner result if you're going to use a drawing tablet. So just know that. Okay, so as I fire up this project, it already creates one layer for me. The background, we don't really count because that's just kind of a fill in the background. The paint layer keeps it as its own isolated layer, and you can create frames across that as you go. You can make more layers which have their own frames, which is really, really cool, but I'm gonna keep it basic today and just keep it on the one layer, and we'll work on that. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a blank frame. It's this button right here. I'm gonna draw just a very basic human nose, all right? And we're gonna start working forward. now. Krita Animation does allow you to use what's called onion skinning. It's a very popular name. It works in multiple tools. I'm just going to flip on the light bulb to do that. And then as I start to step forward and I create a new blank frame, what will happen here is you can see how this changed color. That is governed by down here. I could change this to a different color if I want to. It's telling me what has come before. And if I had drawn ahead, it would tell me what comes after with the green. So that's just an indication of which direction it is. And you can also set how far into each one, how many frames in which direction you want to see. That is perfectly customizable. And you can do that as it makes sense. All right, so for here, I'm just going to add our next frame. We're just going to make this nose grow. All right, that's what's going to happen in this particular animation. I have it set to one frame at a time, and I'm just going to keep doing that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these three lines here and limit that to five frames, because that's how many will be created. And I'm going to change this to 30 frames, just because that's the unit of measure that I usually work with. All right, you can use 24, you can use 30, you can use 60, whatever makes sense for you. I'm going to test that out and play it through. And this is what we have. This is what's going on. I'm going to make it just a little slower so we can see it, but that's what we have created. We have a growing nose. <laughs> that is the very basic layout of how you do it. You do have a lot of different brush options where you could draw this in a variety of styles or whatever you want to do. So these things do not normally drop in by themselves. The animation layout is pretty stripped down. What you can do though is go to settings, dockers, and you can flip on those things that you would want. The brush presets, that's the one that gives you the brushes. Now, Blender. First thing you need to do is actually hop into the 2D mode. So I'm going to start by doing File, New, 2D Animation. And by the way, there are a billion things you can do here. There's a billion things you can do more in Krita. This is just the beginner, get yourself started tutorial. Right off the top, we have a similar layout here, not so different from Krita, where we have similar controls. Um, what you may want to do is take a look at the different uh, drawing instruments. Really, the way you do it is you have to tap or click on this picture here, and that shows you the different choices you have. A lot of people have made other brushes. You can tack onto it if you search for those, so don't hesitate to do that because there's, there's not a lot of options here. You can play around with them in the brush settings somewhat if you want to tweak them, their strength, uh, pressure sensitivity, uh, give them different hardness or roundness or all that kind of stuff. Um, up along the top, this is kind of a, a quicker reach into what you can work on with this and the different settings you can make with it. All right, your tools are along the left here, and um, I'm just going to use the pencil for sake of what we're doing and not go too deep, similar to what we just did in Krita. Now, you do have to start by making a keyframe, so I'm going to do that. It does start you off with this lines layer, which... You could use that, but I just feel safer making my own brand new one. You feel free to comment on uh, <laughs> your thoughts on that. But I'm going to make my own brand new one just so I know it's definitively my layer. All right, so it starts us off with the keyframe. That's what this 
object is here, this little dot. So similar to what we just did in Krita, we're going to make the human nose. And as I step through, what I have to do is I have to drag this forward. I don't have to do anything else which is different from Krita, where you saw me making blank frames every time. Here, all I really need to do is just keep on drawing. And you can see how it made that keyframe for me. So, so on and so forth. So that was five frames right there. If I go back to the beginning and press spacebar, it plays it. You can see it. In Krita, if I want to move this around on the canvas, what I would need to do after selecting the frame I'm working on here is... I need to use the transform. Again, this is one of those dockers you have to flip on, but I'm going to use the transform. That allows me to move it around the canvas to resize it and do those kinds of things if I need to make a correction. For Blender, you have to kind of think that this tool is still visualizing this information in 3D space. So with that in mind, first thing you have to do, you have to press Control Tab. Okay, hold it down, and we have to flip over to Edit Mode. All right, so you pick a frame. <laughs> All right, press the G key. And while I'm holding down that G key, I can move around that piece of it. I also have the control where if I didn't want to just move it along this space, if I wanted to make it smaller, what you can do is I'm just going to tap that so it drops down or uh, release it if you're using the mouse. Um, you have to press G and Y, and if you're familiar with 3D space, Y, it's considered the vertical, but in this case we're moving kind of back and forth within 3D space. So I'm going to press G, Y, and you'll see how that kind of locks it on that plane. That is how I would adjust kind of the overall size, again, G, Y, if I wanted to keep it moving uh, on the, the left and right, that's the X axis, so I would press G, X, and that locks it to move just back and forth that way. However, if you just want to treat it like you're moving anywhere in the canvas, that's just G by itself, and that's simple enough to move and then drop that and click uh, or release where you want it to be. And it's also a means on how you can animate in either one. Blender is actually really cool because of that 3D element where you can stack things in 3D space. And you have actually what I feel a greater degree of control, but it also introduces a lot more complexity. So if you're looking to get into this as a beginner, I would actually say try this out in Krita. Get familiar with the concept of 2D animation because I think it's a little plainer and easier to grasp in Krita. And then from there, if you want to get to the more advanced, really technical stuff, take a leap into Blender and start tackling it there. So two examples. I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for watching. Do uh, hit the thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already. And I will see you again at the next video. Thank you so much for watching and joining in this with me.